with getting started in a couple minutes here. starting in around uh, six minutes. How is everyone doing? Um, those of you in YouTube, Vimeo, Zoom.
be getting started in roughly uh, two minutes here for everyone on Vimeo, Zoom, YouTube, and uh, the other places. How is everybody this afternoon? Yes, Brett, it, it is. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Um uh we had some um we had some client accounts that wanted to stay flat all week and those did good, but um the others not so much. They they all got kind of whipsawed around. So, I mean, if you if you pay attention to equity markets at all, um, you'll notice that there's a there's a lot of individual stocks that are down um, twenty percent or more, and it's been kind of a, like a slow bleed in the background. But when you have tech stocks making up roughly a quarter of the entire uh, uh, market cap. Um, you kind of don't see that it's like a it's like a cancer but everything is still like uh in ponzi mode bull mode and uh with the tech stocks it's it's just you don't even notice the creeping death behind it so yeah <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh mostly um foreign currencies and cryptocurrencies is primarily what i touch now Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get going. This will be um this will be available on YouTube later too for those of you uh who uh have your other people who are wanting to watch it. Um it'll be available whenever YouTube gets done processing it. So this is an introduction into point and figure. And I, I really want to stress that candlesticks are there to take advantage of retail traders and retail investors. There's a reason why brokers really encourage the use of candlestick charts. Um, and it is because they, they are an anxiety <laughs> inducing, um, they are an anxiety inducing chart form. The, if you, if you think about it and I'm, not going to try and get on tangents, but I guarantee I will get on a few. But if you think about it, brokers, you know, especially in the in the retail space, they make their money on your trading volume. OK, you you are a liquidity provider. Now, why do brokers offer you things like free news, free data, um, free charting platforms, free webinars on news, how to trade the news, how like how to use candlestick patterns, how to trade on five minute charts. Why do why do brokers do that? Is it it's is it because they're nice? No. <laughs> they're providing you all I mean it's like Facebook. Why is Facebook free? Because you are the product, okay? Everything that you look at and that you search for has value because they can shill that information off to other people to target you. There's good good and bad things about it. But but retail brokers in the in the trading space um they are only interested in inducing an autonomic response and that is that is what happens with new traders. It is it's what happens when you look at a chart and you're freaked out about your money, okay? Because when you start to perceive fear, when you start to get anxious, that triggers a very it triggers an autonomic response. It, it, that gets into the amygdala, that perceives it, and then that goes all the way to the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, when, once you start to have that fight or flight going on, it terminates the frontal lobes. All right, and the frontal lobes are responsible for logic and reasoning. And the reason that those are disabled 
is it's a very powerful defense mechanism. It's the reason you hear stories sometimes of people who uh, avoided death because time slowed down for them. Um, or you, you hear of like mothers lifting cars off of their children. Um, it is, it is that autonomic response that keeps us safe. And so when we, when we perceive fear or crisis, it's triggered and there is no way in the moment for you to think yourself out of it. Okay. And in trading that response, that autonomic response is what kills accounts and candlestick charts are phenomenal for triggering that response. Now, I'm, I've been trading and uh, been an analyst for, oh, oh God, I was old school egg, but I learned point and figure first, all right? There are two types of charting out there, and, and people won't tell you this, but there are two types. There's, there's, there's analytical charts, and then there's trading charts. Analytical charts are like candlesticks. All right. I probably spend 90% of my time looking at analytical charts like candlestick charts. Trading charts, those are different. That's what point figures. So now let's get into it. Maybe. All right. So a lot of the sources I've used um, in this presentation are from these authors. Probably the best one is the one at the top, though. Jeremy DePless's book, uh, the second, the second, um, uh, edition, second or third edition. I think it's the second edition, the definitive guide to point and figure charting. That is, I mean, that's hands down one of the best trading and technical analysis books out there. Um, if I had to pick a top three, that would be number one or two, uh, easily hands down. I mean, if you're, if you're new to trading, that's the only book you will probably need. Honestly. Okay. Point figure charting, it looks like this. A lot of X's and O's and it looks really weird. And one of the things that's I've learned through the years of teaching this is that people who are brand new to speculating or trading and investing, they pick up point figure charting very easily. It's, it's those of, of you who learned candlesticks first who really struggle. Oh yeah, I probably should share the screen. How about that? I know um, it's visible. Now it should be. That's for the Zoom people, my bad. Should be up. Can you see it? Hopefully. Okay, we'll do the participants. And pull up the chat. There we go. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay, so this is point and figure. Um, X's and O's. Now one of the things that's well there's a lot of things that are different between th this style and candlesticks but candlesticks are three-dimensional in nature there is a time price and volume component involved in them not so with point and figure like when people say price action trading uh, uh, some people believe that like pri price action trading is kind of a buzzword or a buzz phrase um uh, 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 some people believe like they both like naked trading, where you're trading candlesticks without any indicators, or you're just using trend lines or horizontal lines. Um, that's naked trading. That has nothing to do with price action. Price action trading is a style of chart form and a, and a style of trading using a price action chart. So if you are calling yourself a price action trader and you're not using something like Renko, Teardrop, um, uh, TPO, Point and Figure, uh, you're not you're not a point, you're not a price action trader. So point figure charts, they have no time factor. All right. And there is no volume. All right. Volume is not used. And um, I should say vertical volume measured over time is not used. <clears throat> it is the, it is the actual only uh, original intraday charting method. Candlesticks, Japanese candlesticks were never used intraday. Uh, they they were they were not designed for that. That is something that we did here. Well, I'll say uh, that's something that uh, Japanese traders in the 20th century changed, and then we in the West really changed it. But uh, point figure trading is the original standard of of uh, intraday trading. Um, if any of you were familiar with the trading pits in Chicago, so even some of the, the 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 like I don't know if the cattle pits are still open in Chicago. Um, 
but the you got the nicey um guys who were like standing there holding up stuff i mean they, they were using point and figure that that's how that's how market makers today still d do a lot of it um so uh this is uh from Kirkpatrick and Dahlquist's uh a book called technical analysis Point figure charts, of course, have neither time nor volume. They are considered irrelevant to the point figure advocate. That is very true. Price is all that such an analyst is interested in. It is the focused, in this sense, a point and figure technical analyst is a purist. That is very true. Because point and figure trading and charting, we don't pay attention to the news. We don't pay attention to volume. All of those things are moot. They're anecdotal. And um, what I mean by that is... Um, if World War III started tomorrow and the stock market did nothing, was the news important to the stock market? Probably not, right? But boy, if the stock market tanked and World War III started, people would say, well, why did the stock market tank? Oh, it's because of World War III. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> case in point, uh, you have... Um, oh, well, okay, anyways. I was stopped myself before I got on a tangent there. So this is, this is what a point and figure chart looks like. X's and O's. And the best way to think about this is, especially if you're utilizing candlesticks, if that's what you originally uh, started using, um, you have, think of the O's as red candlesticks and the X's as green candlesticks. So the, the O columns, the letter O's, those start from the top and go down and the X's start from the bottom and move up. Okay, so X's equal price moving up. O's equal price moving down. And depending on the charting software you use, this, this can change, all right? Um, because we have, yes, yes, I'm going to go over uh, some live chart. Yes, definitely. It's, it's pointless to go over this stuff without using <laughs> live charts and examples. So, and then I'll, and, and I'll invite some of you to, you know, ask me to, to look at some you know, whether it doesn't matter what it is, if it's uh, cryptocurrencies, foreign currencies, stocks, um, whatever, we, we can look at it. Any instrument can be used very effectively with, with point figure. So the box size, this is how we reference point figure charts by their box size and reversal amount. So in trading view, in trading view, point and figure, um, you want to set it by default, they set it to ATR. I'm going to go over that at some point. But the box size, this is a foreign currency, uh, the British pound, Australian dollar. Um, here, we are looking at a 20 pip box size chart. Again, how you input the box size is going to be different uh, for each charting software. So that's this is just on trading view. Um, then the reversal amount. Okay, now the reversal amount is how many boxes where something's got to reverse now thankfully i i redid this a uh, couple months ago and did a recording so i could show you what the reversal amount looks like but anyways um box size each x and o is a box okay and each box each x and o represents 20 pips because that's a 20 pip box size chart so if there are three x's in a column and only three X's, how many pips worth of movement is that if there's 20 pips? Yeah, 60. Yep, very, very easy, all right? Now the reversal amount, that's the number of boxes required for a new column of X's to O's to form. Now, you will always go from X to O, X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O, okay? You're not gonna go from O to O and X to X. Everything switches, There's the reversals are always the opposite. Um, column all right so in other and also in trading view we identify the reversal amount um in, in the chart as well so when we look at um this this column of x's okay it formed only after price moved up three bots so here's the last o once price moved up three boxes worth then it printed these three x's okay um this column of O's did not print until here's where the last, here's where price ended on this column of X's. But then once price moved down three boxes worth, then it printed that column of O's, right? I've got a little recording here, which will 
it's sped up a lot, so you'll see you'll see how these populate on the screen. I'm just gonna hit play. This is showing you the three box reversal. I forgot how long it usually takes to get there, but I don't think it takes very long. It is playing right. Yeah, it is. And there it is. I think you saw it pop up. So the only time you'll see three X's or O's show up is on the initial three box reversal. Okay. That's the only time you will see those, those show up. All right. Now the next video shows, uh, or maybe it does at the end. Of, you see now it moved up one more X. So it, once it moves up the 10, this is a one pip. <laughs> Uh, never used that, but just did it for these purposes for, for learning. Um, that's what happened there. Um, another recorded video here really fast. Uh, sped up quite a bit to show you how the boxes sh show up in the live market. Kind of an example of that. I want to hear like a thud. Yeah, that's okay. Now that was the same video. This is a new video. So this is showing you like in a live market setting how how the boxes will show up, how they print. All right, clear as mud. Okay, so one of the cool things with point and figure is that the signals are clear and unambiguous. All right, they, like, you know how many candlestick pattern, chart patterns there are? Anybody know right off the top of their head? Got a guess? There's like 243 candlestick patterns. That is a stupid amount of patterns, and nobody in their right mind has to learn all of them. All right. Um, in in point and figure, there's like six. <laughs> there's there's six. Uh, they're they're very easy to to learn, and the cool part is is that we only take entries from multiple tops and bottoms. And so this is going to sound a little bit uh, anathema to a lot of people, but we are always kind. Technically, we're always buying tops and shorting bottoms. I know that sounds really weird and it sounds like, but you're supposed to buy low and sell high. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. yeah. If everybody believes that, if, 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 that's probably why a lot of people get burned. But, um, I mean, there, there is truth to that, but there isn't truth to that too. Okay. So what you have on your screen here, it's split. Okay. You have a, an hourly chart of the Australian dollar US dollar forex pair compared to the point figure chart. Now, the black vertical line is showing you the same quote unquote time frame where it starts. All right. And this is the same thing over here. So you're looking at the same time frame, even though there's no time component. But look at the relatively smooth action of a point and figure chart versus the nightmare, heart attack, anxiety-inducing, cocaine, rage-filled fiesta this nightmare thing is over here. I mean, in a point-figure chart, you will stay in trades longer and avoid this nightmare stuff that happens with all these wicks and bodies. I mean, blech. I, if, if there are people out there who are consistently profitable using candlesticks, you guys are amazing. I don't know how the hell you do it. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not one of them. Can't do it. Uh, no, just not for me. So one of the patterns, the first, the first basic pattern is a, is our double tops and double bottoms. All right. So we have a double bottom and where's the entry. This is the other cool thing about point figure is that, um, you don't have to, you should be able to look at a chart and and oftentimes you will have two trade ideas. You'll you'll know where to go long and short because those levels are already established. 
So that a double bottom, where's our short entry? One box below. So if you if you were looking at this before you logged off for the night and you saw three O's here, you know that if price came down to here again, it formed a double bottom, and you know that the short entry is the box below there. And so you, you could just put a sell stop right there. That, that's what you do. Same thing over here. You have a double top. You know where the entry's at. It's one box above. All right. Triple tops. Now, triple tops, these are great. Um, I don't like, I don't really take double tops and triple and double bottoms unless there's an, an, an accompanying pattern like catapult or a, a, a trap or a fake out. We'll get into those patterns here. But um, taking every double top and double bottom, you're just going to end up blowing your account. But triple tops and triple bottoms, those are ideal. Uh, those those don't show up a lot, but when they do, they are very, very... I think... I think um, I don't think Jeremy Duplessis has in his book. I think it's in Kirkpatrick and Dahlquist's book where they uh, have have done the testing that I think triple tops and bottoms, in equity markets at least, those are the most profitable point, consistently profitable point and figure uh, uh, patterns. All right. So same thing with, with uh, you know, a, a triple double top um, is uh, the entries one box above. Okay. Triple bottom. Where's the short? One box below. Okay. Now, I know some someone just said this looks boring. <laughs> Good, <laughs> because excitement is usually the the uh, precursor to money being lost. Okay. Now you shouldn't be like trading is fun, but but the I mean I don't know how else to say it. But if you're going to trade, you should have a chart style and a method that is as boring as possible because. I mean, winning money is exciting. The process of winning money should not be exciting. Okay, um, that that should that should not be something that you look forward to. You should just look forward to having a winning trade, and not have fun trading your strategy. I mean, that's that makes sense. So, patterns and trend lines. Now, you can. I need to change this slide a little bit, but um, and one thing I do want to point out though is that with point figure. How does swing trading stocks which are oversold work? Of course, waiting for confirmation of an uptrend first. Um, do, do you mean like how do you identify those? Well, actually, this kind of answers that question. Um, with point figure charts, you are always in a bull market or a bear market. And depending on the box size you use, you're going to be switching from bull market to bear market frequently or infrequently. Um, but you are always in a bull market or a bear market. And I pretty much only ever use 45 degree trend lines. And that, that's, that's one of the things that I like about point figure also is that trend lines with candlesticks. I mean, they, uh, like, okay. So this is, this is a candlestick chart. Let me just get rid of the noisy stuff on here. So when you're looking at a, a candlestick chart, pull up, uh, the loony. All right. So, oh, trying to, there we go. Drawing trend lines in in candlesticks is sometimes okay. Do I use this wick? I mean, am I, am I doing that right, or do I just use the bodies, or do I use blah 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 blah. I mean, like how do you? I mean, it's really there's so many reasons why you would pick some wicks shadows and body i mean point figure it is this easy if i want to identify a trend line i'm always starting at a low here and then moving up to that x or i'm starting with an x and moving down to the o x to the o o to the x uh, i have a song coming into my head right now that like that is it. That's that's how you draw trend lines. Now, you can draw subjective trend lines, which are how you would draw trend lines on candlestick charts, where you're connecting them from other peaks and stuff. I generally don't do this a lot. Um, I tend to stick with 
just the 45 degrees. But I mean, that's that's each, each their own. That's how I teach it, though, at least. I still do use subjective trend. It's just not not often enough where I would like want to teach it. It says, I hear some people that trade stocks that become oversold and wait for the break of an EMA to identify a change in direction and ride the recovery. Um, see, well, it shouldn't trade stocks. <laughs> Trading stocks is a losing game. Listen, there are markets designed for speculation and trading, and stocks are not one of them. Um, I mean, stocks used to be, but not anymore. That, that's why markets like foreign currencies and futures exist. They are extremely liquid. They are easier to access. They have a ton more volume, a lot more participation. Um, those are designed for speculators, for day traders. Stocks are not. even. I mean, there's a ton of day traders who trade stocks because that's, that's old school, but there are markets designed for, for day trading and speculation and swing trading. I mean, stocks are good for swing trading if you're looking for weeks and months. So, so the, same, the same patterns that you, you find in um, candlestick charts, you're going to find on point figure charts as well. You're going to find flags and pennants and all those things. Those are going to be there. And when we trade these patterns, um, there's a bear flag that I, I say this every time I do this and I never I always forget to change it, but the bear flag probably should be colored red. I guess it doesn't have to. I mean, it's, I'm just picky about that, I guess. But when you are looking at trading a, a breakout of a pattern, like a, an ascending triangle um, or this, this uh, uh, bear flag, you don't trade the initial break. We still have to wait for multiple bottom. Okay. So this is a case where I would be okay taking a multiple bottom because it's, a breakdown below uh, a pattern like a flag or a pennant. Now, identifying profit targets. This is this is something new new people struggle with a lot. It, you know, if they learn a trading system on candlesticks. You know, they they figure out, okay, well, this is the system I'm using. I'm going to enter when this criteria is met. But then the question is, is well, how long do you hold on to it? And where's your profit target? I mean, that's really what tricks a lot of people up. There's no predefined, they don't have a defined risk management plan. And involved in a risk management plan is a, is a, is a profit-taking plan. And I know this, looks, this makes it look confusing. Like, I hate math. I don't like seeing things in parentheses and asterisks. And pre, I mean, this just makes me want to, like, roll over and die. I just don't want to look at it. This is a horrible, horrible example coming up here. <laughs> but... Um, how we calculate profit targets, this is the vertical profit target method. And, and because I mostly teach this to people who are foreign currency traders, it's the, it's the method that uh, is used the most. There's a horizontal method, but I, I pretty much stick to teaching the vertical one. Um, but uh, so, so let's just assume, pretend you don't see this other part of the screen, okay? Let, pretend you don't see anything beyond this column of O's, all right? Now, all you would see on here is this column of O's. You would notice that the high of the market was back here. The last swing high was this column of X's. So let's say you want to know, okay, well, if, if there's a reversal column of X's that shows up, I know there'll be a double top right here. And I know, my, I, know, I know where my entry will be at. What will my profit target be? All right. Well, what we do is we take... If this is the entry column, so if we're going to enter here, we reference back to this column over here, right? So whatever column we're entering on, how we calculate a profit target is by going back to the last column. So for the X, it's the last X column. If we were doing a short, it would be, if I was trying to determine a short target from this entry, I would look at the, this column. So I'm going to count how many X's are in this column. There's seven. I'm going to multiply that by the box size, just 20. It gives me 140, 140 pips. And then I multiply that by the reversal number, all right, which is three. It gives me 420 pips. <clears throat> you, did you short sell that? I, listen, there's... <laughs> I delete a lot of the comments on my channel because there's people who cut like people treat these cryptocurrencies like like their sports teams. It's like, how dare you be short on it? Da, are you even you and da? It's it's like, like what? Why why are you only looking at one side of the market? 
it, it's it's I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but there are two sides of the market, and if you're only looking in one direction, you, you're going to get ran over by the other side pretty frequently, and, and you're going to get upset. So, you know, people who are blinded and and fans of a of an instrument should probably not be in the game of trading and speculating. Like if you have some type of emotional attachment to the things that you are trading, there's a problem. So 420 pips. So then we add, we add that to the low of this prior column of lows. Okay, so 420 pips plus the low here, which is at 71.41, add 420. That brings us to the price target of 75.60. And so that would have been a hypothetical profit of 320 pips. So if you're trading a tenth of a lot, that's $320. If you're trading a full lot, that was $3,200. Um, now, I'm saying that this is a bad example for two reasons. One, these X's and O's are, O's are squished. Two, is this rarely ever happens. It rarely ever happens that you will calculate. Um, uh, yes, it applies to it applies to uh, forex and indices, a any financial instrument. It applies to. There is not a single financial instrument that this does not apply to. In fact, point and figure is the only chart style that is singular to the field of technical analysis. Variations of candlestick charts, line charts. And such, those exist in other fields outside of financial analysis. But point and figure is the only chart style that is singular to the field of technical analysis of financial markets. Now, uh, what, back to this, like, rarely is your profit target <laughs> going to be the very end. It, it isn't. Oftentimes, profit targets are way far away, but it should kind of give you a, an idea of a range. Um, and so let's let's talk about um, chart patterns in point figure. Um, one of them is the catapult. This is kind of the bread and butter in a way. Um, it's it's where you have a double top. Technically, it's supposed to be a triple top, but again, uh, when I'm trading like futures or foreign currencies, I I I do limit it to two. So there's some type of double top. Okay. And then what happens is you see a little bit of a breakout and then it retraces, okay? But it's the next double top that you wait for and that's the entry. The thing is, is you can only have four to five boxes, all right? So here's the double top. There's one, two, three, four boxes. Pulls back. That's fine. We're going to look at some live markets here. Pull patterns. Again, this is being recorded so people have access to it. A pull pattern is any pattern that has a break of a multiple tops, whether it's double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, whatever it is. Uh, there's less than 15, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to think, is it, it's at least five. So yeah, at least, at least um, five boxes above the entry. Okay. And how you trade a pull pattern, pull patterns are like, they show up everywhere they are they are hey ro how are you doing oh yeah um i was actually uh you mentioned that um small tangent last summer i did a i did uh i trained four couples people have never ever looked at a stock chart before never downloaded seen, like they've never done anything with this before and um this is not a promise of anything, but uh, they turned into like they picked up point and figure in in a in a thirty day period, and they are still trading profitably. They are doing. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it because I went through years of 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 horrible losses and 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 pain, and these people are still doing well. It's really annoying. So people who are new to this, who have never seen, traded candlesticks or anything before, they do very well. And people, those of us who have been poisoned by that, we 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 suck at it still. <laughs> it, the the hardest thing people are going to have who are used to using candlesticks is to eliminate the idea of what's happening on a candlestick chart while you're looking at a point figure chart. It's so hard to do. It is so hard to do. 
it's it's very hard to have that carryover, but 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 hopefully you, you break it. So yeah, there's the um, pull pattern. This column of X's here. This is five or more boxes above the entry, and we would short when it moves to the fifty percent range of this column of X's. Okay, now that seems kind of weird, right? Because most people would say. Oh, you don't want to short that 50%. You want to go long. Well, no, that's, <laughs> there, there's a reason why you don't. Um, and that's, that's what you do there. Now, another thing with the pull pattern is there's the pull setup. You have this column, right? So this, here's the pull pattern. That is the, this column of O's. And price retraced. Okay, moved up. It had reverse, three box reversal. It moved higher but it didn't go 50% of the way. Instead, what did it do? It turned, we had a new column of O's show up. You short again on the three box reversal, okay? So pull patterns are, are awesome. And then there's, there's a spike pattern too. So I'm just standing this and I'm sitting down. Okay, so let's look at some live charts. Um, somebody, what is something that you trade? Foreign currency, stock, index, future, whatever. Somebody give me something to look at. I'm going to pull up Optima 2 here just to show you how there's different. NAS 100, so the, the NQ. NAS 1, GBP, JPY. Oh, why? I have the same feeling with the GBP JP wiper that I do with oil. I have like, I get the shakes. <laughs> There's just some things I've been burned on so bad. So, okay, let's look at, I'm just going to show you real quick how different charting software uh, shows point and figure differently. Um, so here's the pound dollar. Now we call it point and figure because it used to be used on graph paper, all right? And so when you look at, when you look at like, oh, I don't know why the graph isn't there. Get rid of it. So old school, you know, you would look at this grid paper and that's how you, that's where you would draw the X's and O's. That, that's, that's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, Trading view, um, most software, they don't do that. So let's look at, um, you said NASDAQ. You have somewhere. Let's see. Mm. How about I thought I had it one up here. All right, we'll we'll go here. This is actually a good good thing to do. So if you're using Trading View, by the way, if you don't have a paid subscription to Trading View, get one. It is the best <laughs> deal in in trading i you guys have no idea how lucky you are to be in this field right now if, especially if you're new because i wish the, the stuff that's available now like on trading view was was not available 10 years ago well maybe it was but i mean i mean like people have access to tools that were generally only reserved to people who had bloomberg terminal yeah, if you have the fifteen, I think if you have fifteen dollar month one, okay, is okay because point figure. If you go to it on, um, let me just actually open up a new chart layout. So this is what it would look like if you are, well, let's do the default. Oh gosh, I hate this setup. I really I have to get rid of these. Give me one second here. Get rid of these grid lines. Ugh. Oh, there we go. And just because I'm picky, I like to make the everything uniform and easier to see. So this is something you're going to want to do on any instrument you trade. Okay, because by default, this is what happens. So if, we, if we're going to the, let's go to the pound yen. All right. And default up here, it says, ATR average true range. Oh, for the love of God, do not use this. This is this is wrong on so many levels. I know why TradingView does it. 
but don't use that, okay? Go to settings or double click on the on the uh, X's or O's. And for something like the pound yen, there's three different quote unquote time frames, but, ch but the chart style. So you're gonna wanna go to symbol, box size assignment method, traditional, okay? And I'm going to change this to, so if we're looking at, at uh, foreign currencies, like a yen pair, one pip is 0 0.01, all right? 10 pips is 0 0.1, so I'm gonna go with 0 0.1. So that's my box size. And then the scales go there, lock price to bar ratio, you're gonna wanna make the scale of your chart the same as your box size, okay? So then you don't get like the squished up look, it doesn't look weird, um, so, so you get this, all right? Now, you should be able to zoom in and out, not mess up the scale. So this is what I mean by point and figure being so badass is that I look at this chart, I already know there's an opportunity to go long and an opportunity to go short. I could put the order in and sit back and not have to stare at my chart anymore, all right? There's a double top right here. So if the pound yen moves up another box, it'll form a triple top. Where's my entry on a triple top? It's at 150, 150. My entry will be one box above that. I I could put in a buy stop at 150, 160. And just type that in there. That's a actually I this is a really nice setup by the way for both sides of the market. So it'd be a buy stop at 150, 160. All right. Now, utilizing the, the, the same, um, we can calculate the profit target. So if I'm entering on this column of X's, what do I do? I'm referencing back one column of X's, which is over here. There's, I have to count how many X's there are. One, two, three, four. Take my calculator. Don't really need to do this with the calculator, but just for going through the steps. I know there's four X's. My box size is 10 pips. So I'm going to type in 10. I'm going to multiply that by the reversal amount, which is three. Uh, is there more than, yeah, there's, there's, there's different reversal box sizes. There's, there's five and two and one, like one is the original. Uh, I only ever use three, so that's all I ever teach. So 120, 120 pips is that. So I'm going to add 120 pips to the low of the prior column of O's, which is right here. And that's at 151 even, so that's really easy. 152.20 is the profit target. Okay, now, um, here's, the, here's the point, is that, so that's 60 pips from the entry, that's a 60 pip profit target. On the pound yen, that's, that's really, really doable, but, don't tie up your capital. This is more of like a, a, a risk management, trade management thing. But don't risk your trade capital on a single entry, okay? I don't care whether you're trading a full lot or a tenth of a lot. Break it up, okay? If this is your profit target, assume it's not going to get it, that, that it's not going to get hit. But break it up into like three or four trades. Like I'm going to enter here, but I'm going to take profit in 10 pips and then more at 20 and then more at 30. And then I'll leave. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, you know, a quarter of a position at 10 pips profit, another quarter at, tw at 20 pips profit. And then maybe I'll just leave, let the other half run. I'll move my stop loss into uh, 10 pips into profit. And so it's a free trade. I just let it run and do its thing. Or you could set a trailing stop. All right. The stop loss, somebody asked about stop loss. I always use a, a four box, three or four box. So from the entry, if I pretend that there's an X here, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four boxes. That's my stop loss. And if you wanna see like a risk to reward ratio, people would like to see that. There you go. And there you go. One one point five to one, ten pip chart. That's normal. Okay, so that's for the long side of it. Now, 
the other I also know that there's a short opportunity. Why? Oh, by the way, if this triple top gets hit, it's not just a break of a triple top. This is another pattern. I don't go over it in the slides, but when you have whether it's a double top or I mean double bottom, double any, any multiple bottom, and then you have the sell signal, which is what this was right here. Triple top, there was a sell signal. Look what happened. Price didn't move further down. Instead, it reversed. Now, if this column of X's does create a buy stop, because this O is here from a multiple bottom, that's called a bear trap pattern. Okay. These, by the way, you're gonna find trap patterns all over the place. And those are the things that you that like you should probably make that a criteria if you're going to use this is to only take trades that have some existing trap. So this is a bear trap. And then there's a break of a triple top. That is a recipe for awesome. I mean, that is just, this is one of the most ideal setups you'll ever find. This is great to see a, a trap. Now, if there's one more O here, if there's two, that's called a bearish fake out. That's a stronger version of a bear trap. Um, if there's three, I don't know what that is. It's not a pattern. <laughs> so it has to be one or two boxes below that low. If there was a, you can probably find an example of a bull trap around here somewhere too. Um, here's a bullish fake out. Here's a good example. Oh, that would have been sweet. Here's a double bottom. Price moved up. Here's the double top. 1x, 2x, then it reversed. Created a short entry off of a triple bottom. So it's not only a break of a triple bottom, but it it created a bearish fake out pattern. So that's two there. Again, you'll have this in the recording. So on this pattern, um, this is a catapult. So if a new column of O's shows up, all right, then the short entry is, if there's a O that shows up at 151 even, the, the sell stop short, is at 149, uh, 4.9, right? Uh, yeah. Oops. Wait, nope, what am I doing? I know math. One, <laughs> 150, 90, where, where am I going with this? 150, 90. So that'd be the sell stop. Identifying the profit target for a short, we just do the same thing, uh, just do the inverse. So we're gonna add one, two, three, four, four, there's five O's, five O. Five times our box size, which is 10, times our reversal amount, which is three. So we're gonna subtract, we're gonna subtract. We don't know where that final X is in this column, but let's just assume that it's here. Let's just say this is the last X. We're going to subtract 150 pips from 151.40. So 151 minus 1 1.5. That's 150 pips on a yen pair. 149.5. So the profit target from that entry. Is that right? Yeah, 149.5. Why does that not seem right? Uh, well, whatever. But that's that's how you that's how you calculate the, the target. No, yeah, you're right. You got it. Thanks for putting that in there. Okay. And again, the stop is is there. So that's that's on the pound yen. You wanted to know about the Nasdaq. So you're gonna want to have um, multiple charts for the things you're going to trade. Um, like I have here, uh, different instruments. Something that, that you'll notice about TradingView is don't go from this to something like Bitcoin because TradingView will hate you. It will want to burn you and it will just freeze up and die. Um, so before you go to a much bigger chart like Bitcoin, like change this. So like, like we're going to be going to well, we can go to like the NASDAQ just fine. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So this is the futures contract, the NQ. For the futures contract, 
on the NQ, I use a five point um, box size. I use a five, 10, and 20, but we'll just use the five box for right now. So let's see, is there anything to see here? By the way, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and type them in there. Uh, yeah, this is a spike pattern. So a spike pattern is any column that has 15 or more X's or O's. And the entry is always on the short. They're very risky, um, but they can be really, really profitable. So let's see, let's change the box size and see if there's something else that we could find on here. I'm just, I think there is actually, I was just looking at this guy. New. Uh, question, um, and I know someone's probably wondering is, okay, if this whole column of O's comes down here and forms a triple bottom, would you short it? No. no that's, that's way too much movement. I, I would I would wait. But do a 20 point. So the 20 point three box reversal chart also has nothing to go off of. So uh, somebody else give me another. Uh, oh, somebody said GU. So let's look at pound. Point figure is awesome from foreign currencies because they move so much. So. This is a non-yen pair, so if I'm going to look at it, a 10-pip point figure chart, let's look at a 5-pip. 0.0005. That is a, well, if that happens, you just have to hit auto fit data and then reset the, oops. <coughs> Excuse me, not COVID, it's just drying my office. Um, eh. oh, well, actually, that, this is this is a good one to look at. So that five pip chart is very quote unquote fast chart. Um, so there's, I don't think there's 15 O's in this column. Um, different settings for different pairs. Yes, that's actually something I, me I meant I keep meaning to put in my slides is is um, I'll, I'll type something out here real quick and leave it on the screen for folks. But um, so this isn't a, a spike pattern. This is more this is a pull pattern. OK, so you have this column of of this is how you would treat this. All right. If you're looking at the pound dollar, and you're like, OK, how would I trade this? Well, first off, I know there's not 15. I don't think there is one, two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh my God! There's fifteen exactly. Damn it! <laughs> Let's just say there's not. And I'm gonna do a fib retracement, and I'm gonna look where the fifty percent level is. Okay. As long as it doesn't go past, as long as there's an X that doesn't go past that fifty percent level, the next three box reversal I can short. So. This is require this one requ this this requires active trade management. It's not like putting in entries from multiple tops and bottoms. This one you don't know it, where it's going to go, so you kind of ha actively have to watch it. So the three box reversal is not from the first X. You got to go one, two, three. This would be the short entry. That would be the short entry would be at um, uh, one thirty eight eighty. That would be the short entry. All right. Now, I want to show you something that this is another thing that brokers really don't offer. Some of you may or may not be familiar with it. <clears throat> it's called volume profile. You typically have to pay a premium to get it. Um, TradingView, I don't know, does TradingView offer it for free now? I think I'm still paying for it. Oh, I, I know I'm still paying for it, but I don't know if they offer it for free or not. Um, but volume profile is horizontal volume okay so quick little let's look at the session volume all right so this is showing us the volume profile from each trading day now i know i said that point and figure doesn't measure volume it doesn't measure vertical so when you look at a candlestick chart and you see these volume bars this is measuring how much of something was traded over a certain period so Daily, weekly, monthly, one second, one minute. It's telling you how much of something was traded 
at a certain time period. Volume profile, also called market profile, there's a TPO time price uh, opportunity. There's a lot of different versions of it. But the volume profile shows you how much of something was traded at a particular price. Okay. That is way more important because that is telling you where bulls and bears have been, have been like fighting each other. And the red line forms what's known as the VPOC, the volume point of control. That is where the most amount of something is traded at a particular price. All right. And that is a very powerful area of support and resistance and, and something that day traders do. Old floor, old floor pit traders using point figure would always look at it and go, price is above the VPOC, only taking long trades. If it's if it's uh, if it's below it, it's only taking short trades. Um, you know, you can look at it from a weekly perspective, or from this is for from every uh, for each day, showing you how how it trades. So, <clears throat> but that is if you want like a secret weapon. That is a secret weapon. This is as close to a cheat code <laughs> as you're going to get when it comes to, in my opinion, when it comes to trading and, and point and figure uh, charts. Like if we, if we could look at like a one pip chart, which don't ever do that. Don't ever look at a one pip chart, but just for, just for learning purposes. I mean, you can see how bearish things are below that point of control how it still is so i mean if you're if you're trading a one pip chart this is a you know, there's no trade here to be taken but um oh yeah let me type that out real quick uh i'm gonna put it on the chart here so for things like uh um non-yen pairs Five yen pairs. Uh, Bitcoin five hundred, uh, one thousand, uh, something like Ethereum. Oh. Uh, yeah, what is it? It's 50, uh, 25 and 50, I think. Is it the only two I use there? Um, uh, NASDAQ. So the NQ. I use a 5, 10, and a 20 point. ES, I use a point. Uh, I use uh, 0 0.5, 1, and 2.5. I think... So these are these are the box sizes of of things. I think that um, something like uh, um, so people people like cryptocurrencies look at things like um, oh I should say like silver. They use a zero point uh, two five. And I always use a three box reversal. There, there is. Uh, somebody asked on the Vimeo um, the the one or two box reversal. I mean, I don't know. If there's people that use it. I I don't teach it because I don't use it. Um, I I had to learn it, but yeah, I don't um, personally use it. I just stick with three boxes, and 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 again, I mean, th this this is more about you know if you're going to trade. Like do your analysis on on, you know, like when I when I do when I do my analysis, um, you know, I spend again I spend like most of my time is spent doing analysis, and I use candlestick charts. I use ad, 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 advanced theory and analysis, uh, apply advanced applied theory and analysis. I use, um, you know, the yeah uh, astronomical levels, Euclidean geometry, um. You know, I, I use all of those like this is the this is the pound dollar the, the and these wavy lines. This is the this is the mean of 
the slow planets, longitudinal position. Um, so this is, uh, wait, no, this is the mean of phi, right? Oh, no, it's the midpoint of Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus. Uh, that's that, for whatever reason, that longitudinal average is the natural support and resistance level for the British pound. <sighs> By the way, if everything I just said about planets is weird, it is. <laughs> But but like we use we do use NASA's and JPL's data to to analyze financial markets and get a little bit of a off topic. But we use we use these values to calculate price objectives because uh, for whatever reason um, they they are very useful and people have been using this in financial markets forever and a day. Um, and it, it's, it's the science of astronomy, not astrology. Astrology turned into a practice. It was a science, and now we call it now now we call uh, the science astronomy, but, um, um, but yeah, I mean, use, using all of the, the really detailed stuff that you would learn in, um, advanced technical analysis, you, um, you get into how you are going to interpret markets oops let me give you that so this is i mean this is uh these channels are are formed this form of euclidean geometry um the o's would actually i think i gotta square the chart differently or whatever but that's where these anyways you, you do all of your analysis okay that takes the long part but then if you're looking at this and you're going okay uh, there's your rejection up against the mid here. I'm going to look at taking short entries. You get off of the candlestick chart. And then you execute the trades over here. All right. You execute your short entries on point figure. Why? Because this does not cause nearly as much uh, emotional and psychological trauma <laughs> as candlesticks do. All right. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to reference back to, uh, y y you know, looking at this versus candlesticks. Uh, get out of there. One sec. Let me like set this up into a 20 pip chart. Oops. And we'll put the candlestick chart on the right. Oh. So there's, I mean, put the drawings are the same and put a vertical line tool. Hold on, I don't think it'll let me do it like that. One second. It's the right same pair, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna actually go back. I'm taking a long time to try and make my point, aren't I? Probably not a very good pair to do this on. <laughs> Let me actually pick a different one because the pound's been kind of wonky. Um, what about the? Little, little better, but not much. Oh, wow. Foreign currencies have really been crap, haven't they? But uh, here's my point. So if I'm going to put this here, looking at the same frame of time reference, this is the, they've got the candlestick chart on your right versus the point figure. So if this was, if this was a catapult, double bottom. And then you sold that uh, down there, but then reversal column and then another double bottom. There's your sell entry. If we would have entered short here, 
point figure would have kept us in the trade until there was a two or three box reverse or whatever your trail trail is. But I mean, <laughs> look at this freaking uh, torture chamber of a chart. I mean, anybody would have gotten out too early looking at this chart. I mean, there's no there's no way you wouldn't have looked at this and gone, oh, my God, I got to get out of this trade. I mean, there's just it's just it filters out the noise. All right. I mean, basically, you can think of it like this. This column of O's, this is an hourly chart. It represented how many hours worth of movement? Um, can we get the this start start at seventy three sixty? So kind of up here ish till the low was found, which is down at even lower. I mean, like three days worth of data of 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 trading you just got got yourself out of. Um gold I use um five dollar well let me put that where did I leave that at? Oh shite. Um Don't remember what chart I had that on. Shoot. Probably should have kept that on there a little longer. Sorry, guys. Because I tend to go off and forget where I was at. Anyways, um, yeah, it'll be in the recording. But yeah, that's that's that. Um, any other questions? So like next Thursday have some um instruments you that you want to look because i want to go i want to mostly go over looking at trade opportunities with point and figure for the next session instead of the intro here um we're going to go over it like every other week and then as as people have picked up on it in the other group uh we're going to uh uh you know and so forth Yeah, and the you know, reach out if you guys have questions. I'm, I'm pretty. I mean, I do this for a living, so uh, very, very easy to reach. Um, may not respond right away. No, I will respond right away. Let you know that I got your message, but um, might take a day or two before I get back to you. But yeah, if you guys have questions, please ask them so I, I can compile a lot of them, and and uh, a lot of people have the same questions. But yeah. Um, all right. Well, that does it for me. Thank you all for coming and um, hope you guys have had a good week so far. Take care of yourselves. Have a good weekend and I'll talk with you all next week. Bye bye.